Kids, the Halloween horror just doesn't stop. Get ready to learn the totally tubular theme from The Exorcist. children and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wang Shop, here with the host with the most, Uncle Ben. Yeah, like I mentioned last week when I showed you how to play the theme from John Carpenter's Halloween, check that out if you haven't already, I sure do love me some horror films. It's one of my favorite parts of the entire Halloween season. And when you're talking about great horror flicks with awesome soundtracks, it's absolutely impossible not to mention what a lot of people consider to be the scariest flick of all time, The Exorcist. The main theme for the movie is Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield, which is a completely awesome song. It's got a really cool kind of piano theme that runs through the whole thing, and you get all these neat harmonies and chords and stuff that go on behind it. Really cool tune that I thought would be perfect to turn into a little two-hand tapping workout for you kids on Weekend Wank Show. It also turned out to be harder than Satan's dick, so I really wish you guys luck with this one. It's actually a really long tune, but I just arranged some of the most identifiable parts for you guys. The left hand will be playing kind of the main theme throughout the entire thing, and then the right hand is going to jump in and play some harmonies to that theme, as well as some chords behind it too. So it's in three different sections. So first things first, let's check out the left hand's part, because that never changes the entire time. As far as setup goes, I recommend using a neck humbucker on your guitar if you've got one, or if you've got a single coil in there using a neck single, that'll be fine too. Play through a clean tone with a bit of compression, and some reverb and delay, if you got it. And some chorus if you want to make it sound extra expensive. And as always, kids, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on Uncle Ben's Instagram page. Look up Ben Eller Guitars and you will surely find it. Learn how to play this week's lick and upload a video of yourself shredding through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. <laughs> okay, so the left hand is going to be playing the same thing through that entire piece, so let's go ahead and start digging into that. It's all based around the A minor scale, which means you're going to be using A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All natural notes, just like mom used to make. So the left hand's portion is two separate licks that are almost the exact same thing. I'll show you what's up with it. The first part's in 7 over 4, the second measure's in 4 over 4, so that can be a little funky, but there's a pretty simple trick to it. So the first lick is going to start off with the open high E string, which you could pluck with your right hand if you wanted to. Uh, I go ahead and pluck it with the left hand though, just to kind of go ahead and get in that full sort of, you know, left hand tapping mode. So all you're doing is just plucking the string open. You don't have to hammer it on or anything like that. You can just pluck it, just like you do over here. Now after that, what you're going to do is to hammer on to fret number 5. Pull off to open, hammer on fret 7, pull that off to open, and then you're going to hammer on 3rd, 5th. So that went open 5, open 7, open 3, 5. The next part is going to go open to 8, open to 10, and then you're going to go open 7, 8. And that ends the entire first half of the lick. 5, 7, 3, 5, 8, 10, 7, 8. That right there is the 7 over 4 lick. Now, the one that follows it is in 4 over 4, but it's really easy if you just think of it like this. You play all the exact same stuff that you just played, only you're also going to add in open 7 at the very end. That's it. So it's the same lick two times in a row, it's just that the second time you add on open and 7. That's it. So if we play it in sequence, it'll go like this. 5, 7, 3, 5, 8, 10, 7, 8, 5, 7, 3, 5, 8, 10, 7, 8, 7. 
So you can see it's the exact same lick two times in a row. You just add on an extra open and seven at the end. Now you can notice too there, I'm kind of dampening out all the unused strings with the backside of my right hand thumb here. This guy's fixing to jump in and do some work here too, but I figure in the meantime, if you can be dampening out those strings, why not? Just to make it sound a little cleaner. I recommend practicing that first part a whole ton just to get the muscle memory and stuff down for that really well. You're going to be needing to keep your eyes on your right hand for this next part to kind of babysit him a little bit. So I recommend trying to get this left hand going totally on autopilot with that main theme before you start working in the right hand stuff. I'll also say whenever you're playing two-handed tapping, one of the big keys is to use your peripheral vision. You know, just kind of look out of the sides of your eyes at what both hands are doing. You can't very well be watching both hands at the same time with that left hand bouncing all over the place in the right hand as well. So what you've got to do is to kind of, you know, set your gaze somewhere in the middle of your two hands and just look at both of them from the sides of your field of vision, you know. You won't be looking directly at them, but you can see a little bit of both, which is good. So the right hand melody is going to sound like this. And again, that's lined up exactly with the left hand's notes. And what I'm doing here is I'm playing the 10th fret D, 12th fret D, and then I'm going to go from 9th to 10th. So that's a little hammer on right there, you know. And then after that, what you're going to do is to play the 9th fret G, 10th fret G, and then you're going to go 7 to 9. So, so far in the D, we played 10, 12, 9, 10. Then we go to the G string, 9, 10, 7, 9. That's the first half, the 7 over 4 part. So for the second half, you remember where we added in that extra note with the left hand? Well, we got to add in an extra note with this hand. So the second half of the lick is going to sound like this. On the D string, 10, 12, 9, 10. Then we go to the G string here, 9, 10, 7, 9. And then our extra note, which is going to be fret number 7, a D note. Just like that. And again, those notes are tied up with the left hand here. The left hand is going to be doing all those open pull-offs, you know. The right hand will not. It'll only be playing the notes uh, just dry right on top of the left hand counterparts. Like that right there. Trickiest thing is keeping your dampening going on. It's really easy to accidentally start making those other strings uh, vibrate sympathetically like mine were just a second ago. So you really got to be careful about that. That's the hardest thing about all of this, as well as just keeping your fingers from getting kind of tangled up. You'll notice that like with the right hand, I'm going uh, index to ring for the whole step kind of gaps. And then for the half step gaps, I'm using index and middle. Like that. Meanwhile, the left hand is using all kinds of different digits. So a lot of times you'll be, you know, using the middle finger over here with the ring finger over here. And it can really get kind of tangled up. So that's a, probably one of the trickiest parts about this too. So once you get the whole thing down, it should sound something like this. Notice that the right hand is not doing any pull-offs. He's only tapping on those notes directly in line with where the left hand is doing his. Just like that. So after you play through that harmony line two times, I started making the right hand go to these two chords, an A minor and a G. It's not full triad, it's just roots and thirds, but hey, it still counts. Now how you're going to play those chords is you're going to be tapping on the 5th fret low E and the 5th fret G at the same time, like this. Just holding them down. Now for the G chord, that's going to be the 3rd fret low E and the 4th fret G. Again, just struck down at the same time. So we got 5 and 5, 3 and 4 to form those two chords like that. And basically what you're looking to do is to time the strike of this A minor chord down when the pointer finger comes down on the 5th fret. Just like that. Just give it a really solid sound. After that, what you're going to do is to continue to hold down those two notes while the left hand dances around here and plays the main theme. Now, this is kind of the tricky part about this is because you can't really see through your own hand. So again, this is where muscle memory really comes into play with this stuff. I really can't see where the 8th fret is or even the 7th fret with my hand like that. Maybe I could peel it away like that and see a little better. I don't know. But either way, you kind of got to know where those frets are uh, because you're not really going to be able to see them. But it'll sound something like this. Now after that, what we're going to do is for the second repetition here, we're going to switch to the G chord. So again, the G chord gets the slightly longer one, the 4 over 4 measure. So A minor for the 7 over 4. Then the G. And 
And just hold those chords out as long as you can. You know, you want those notes ringing out while the left hand dances around and plays that melody so you can hear those notes contrast to each different chord, you know? You don't want it to be like, like that. You want to hold them as long as you can. Spooky. So there you have it, kids, the theme to one of the most beloved horror flicks of all time. Now you've got all the ammunition you need to creep your mom out this Halloween season, for sure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, as well as follow my antics and shenanigans on Twitter and Instagram. Find me over there, Ben Eller Guitars. Also, if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. I can teach you all the theory and scales and modes and all that other crap that you need to be the talk of the town. Thanks again, you guys. Stay tuned for more spooktacular shit next week.